quick, uh, JRPGs for you, you typically turn your nose up quite often at JRPGs um, in discussion, uh, and yet this and a few others hold some pretty close, mm-hmm. close places in your heart. Like what, what would you, how would you quantify that discrepancy, I guess? Um, I, and when did it happen as you were growing up? Because you, you did mention that when you were younger, you just kind of ate JRPGs. Eight, not hate. You just ate them. Uh, yeah, that's all I played. In fact, we, uh, my parents, goodness gracious, we had a sort of book burning situation for me where we burnt uh, all of my uh, video games at the time, uh, anything that was basically a JRPG, all of my Yu Gi Oh! and Pokemon cards, anime, stuff like that. We just burnt it all literally in the church parking lot. That's terrifying. Yeah, it was crazy, dude. True backwoods church right there. <laughs> yes, it was nuts. Uh, but anyway, at the time, uh, all I was playing was JRPGs. And now that doesn't mean that um, I... That's by myself anyway. I play a lot of things with friends. Um, so I played uh, Tales of Symphonia a couple times. Chrono Cross, obviously. Final Fantasy 1 through four and then i played uh seven as well never finished seven but i played seven um there were probably a couple of things oh it was jrpg enough but my parents uh didn't mind because it was lord of the rings but uh lord of the rings the third age oh yeah i played Um, the third age yeah i i had some fun with that i feel like it's probably a terrible game so i don't think i'll ever play it again (laughs) but uh i had fun with that and uh anything i could get on the game boy as well Though surprisingly, uh, I never did play uh, Golden Sun. Um, yeah, crazy. I don't know how you skipped Golden Sun. Yeah, yeah. I even played the Game Boy games on on Final Fantasy. I mean, the the Final Fantasy games on Game Boy. Those uh, what was it like Final Fantasy Legends or something? I played both of those. Uh, I just never got around to Legends. No, it's uh, something else. Legends might not be right. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyhow, that's all I played, and then after that, um, my and actually. They had got me to agree to it. That's that's what's terrible. They had got me to agree to that book burning. Uh, but this was after my <gasps> taste. Yeah, dude. Uh, after my taste had sort of uh, shifted anyway, I found Metroid Prime. Uh, early on. Talk about just an after, awakening moment. Uh, yes. Uh, dude, I'd, I'd played some other um, uh, Western games, which, I, you know, I know Metroid is a Nintendo, but Metroid Prime is a Western game through and through. Um, I, I played Ape Escape. Uh, that's a Japanese game, but not a JRPG. Oh, love, yeah, uh, I played Ape great. Escape. I played, uh, the first two and a half Jack games, uh, with a friend. I never had a PS2 and, uh, and then, oh, Prince of Persia. So right around the same time I came into Jack, Prince of Persia and Metroid Prime. Uh, and that's when I wasn't playing many of those games anyway. And, uh, it. Yeah, I got rid of them. Yeah, see, for I me, burnt it was them at church. For me, it was interesting. The uh, GameCube was first for me, so actually, Metroid Prime was my uh, my one of the first games that really woke me up to video games. But before then, I'd played quite a few games that had a big impact, like Chrono Cross on me, Battle Network, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but funny, it, we'll we'll talk about it later. But one of the games that I'm going to bring up later is came later after Metroid Prime for me, so. Yeah, I, that, that's so, a lot of this, this kind of, you know, visceral, all-encompassing response that you had to Chrono Cross, I've found to be the case for many other people, uh, at least that I know personally. Uh, a few YouTubers who are like big JRPG people, they always talk about just, you know, that game that just over, like it, everything in their little tiny child brain all of a sudden came alive at this over-the-top ridiculous video game you know for a lot of people like for one of my friends it was final fantasy as he calls it two and three right because he played them on super nintendo okay you know? so if for, for what is that five and six four and five uh, four and six okay. four and six yeah so it just came alive you know for him that's all he loved playing was jrpgs uh for my friend jordan for those of you who don't know my friend jordan is a police officer who is one of the most muscular people yeah. on the planet. And he's like, you know, mixed martial arts. Uh, he trains close quarters combat at the police academy. Like after just a year of being there, like the guy is intense, right? And uh, and he and I were just kind of talking like, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. Nice to meet you. And then he just kind of 
you know, threw in there. I was talking about video games, like, oh, dude, you like Final Fantasy VII? And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, dude, that game is the reason I am, like, alive. And he goes into this huge tirade of, like, these ideas for, like, stories that it gave him. And, like, how he just write in his journal about Final Fantasy VII fan fiction. And, like, you know, just, it just overtook him. And I was like, you? You? <laughs> so, like, it's it's not this, you know, isolated event. It's very... I think there's something universal to it. And a lot of times it is a JRPG for people. Yeah. You know, for me, it was Battle Network 3. It doesn't quite ch- check the, you know, turn-based box or the gameplay box, but the ridiculous over-the-top story that's really heavy-handed and the huge cast of characters and the anime designs and the, you know, all of this stuff, uh, it's there. And these games are like light bulbs for people. Uh, in Dude... Following generations, I feel like are going to miss that because what are the games the past two or even three generations, two generations, I guess, after us um, ha- have had? It's Minecraft and Fortnite. That's all people talk about. Five Nights at Freddy's. That's a big one. Um, I don't think we're going to have much Hello, like that. Neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, neighbor. Hello, <laughs> neighbor. Oh my god. No, you're so right. Like, nobody shuffles through their cousin's box of PS1 games to find this weird looking anime ass thing and they just shove it in their PlayStation and play it for a year. Like, it doesn't happen. Now we're gonna sound like curmudgeons. Uh, there, I think, with the right facilitation, these moments still happen. You know? Because I wanna bring about. Yeah, but so few people do that. It's like, go play Fortnite and don't talk to me. Cause... And don't talk to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here's something crazy. So when I was playing Chrono Cross, from moment one, starting the game, being, you know, after you do the little intro and you're on the island, the music, the 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 hand-drawn backgrounds, everything, even some of the designs, I was like, I'm in Kingdom Hearts. I'm in, I'm in Kingdom Hearts 1 right now. I'm on Destiny Beach right now. <laughs> what is happening? And I, you know, you, you explore the world and some of the designs and stuff. And then, oh, the music just keeps going. Keeps giving. And it's, it's so good. And some tracks are just verbatim beautiful, tracks beautiful. in Kingdom Hearts. And, of course, Kingdom Hearts came later. So, it, you know, take, take your go from that. But, like, I... Well, it used a lot from Square's repertoire, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's got its own unique tracks, but th- there's a lot from Final Fantasy, isn't there? Uh, there's some, there's some, okay. Some, but all that to say, it's, which is funny because that game was one for me, that was a light bulb. Where I would go outside the trampoline and Nick and I would pretend we were heartless and like fight each other <laughs> and like if yeah. you won, your heartless would get stronger to the next level of heartless or whatever. Like you know, we do that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was it was just that your creativity just exploded out because of this game, and you know to this day Kingdom Hearts is you know top 10 favorite games of all time for me yeah. one and two and there's something there some bottled magic there that just you know fires on all cylinders for for people of that age in particular uh i have here like so the music the tone the atmosphere the mawkish good-naturedness of like the story it's just very sincere heavy-handed obvious uh and it's it's all there all the same little tiny elements fit into this picture of whatever this bottled magic is for people. Uh, it's it's something I can't quite quantify. Yeah, uh, it's it's hard to. It's really hard to because it, it's so far behind us. And like we have Chrono Cross, but we don't have every moment or Kingdom Hearts. But we don't have all those little moments. We just have this sort of uh, this is weird because I was, you know, uh, in church the other day talking about this, but like Chrono Cross is on my shelf and that entire shelf, the middle shelf of the three that I've got is sort of uh, this Ebenezer of my childhood. Uh, it, it just, all these relics, we have the thing, but we don't have all those little moments. So of course it's difficult to quantify, but we can remember it well enough by looking at, you know, Chrono Cross standing up on, I, I switch between Chrono Cross and, uh, um, Odd World Abe's Odyssey, putting it oh, on yeah. the standee instead of on on the shelf, you know, spine forward. Uh, I, I stand one up uh, to be displayed, yeah. Um, and yeah, you've got these little little relics. 